Hey folks, welcome to Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel. See what this is? This is what we locally call a jetty anchor. It's nothing more than rebar to pipe. I used to make them myself back in the day. I usually buy one a year. This is for throwing up in the jetty rocks. And the rebar bends and you bend it back and then they break and well it's getting to be that time of year where the northeast winds are a blowing. I didn't even go today because it was 20 knot northeast. And it was probably pretty heinous. It was tough the last two days with this new moon tide. And then today, you know, we rescheduled 20 knots out of the northeast. Uh, it just wasn't worth it. Not when you can go on a better day. I went to my bait and tackle shop and picked myself up my yearly jetty anchor. And no, I don't have a trolling motor. I'm going to show you what I do with these jetty anchors when they are brand spanking new. And then I'm going to show you a little surprise I had yesterday while we were fishing at the Mayport Jetties. Finally, it was payback time. Alright, got the lead pot going here. Let me skim off some of the crap because this is how I prep my jetty anchors. Pour some of that off, get some of the scum off the top. Alright. This isn't a really good burner. Before you say anything, this is a shit burner I've had for 25 years. That down in there does not have any turbo left to the flame. Well, this is a pipe. Nothing more than a pipe. And I am going to put lead down inside of it. What I do with my jetty anchors, is I pour lead down inside What I do is I melt lead in here and then what I'm trying to do is fill up the cracks in this pipe because this pipe will rust. Let's see, can you see it? Yeah. This pipe will rust from the inside out if, if you get a bunch of salt water in it. So what I do is I try to seal the end here. This one was extremely tight. I'll repaint it. I'm just trying to seal this. It ends up filling full of salt water. I've done this for some friends that don't even have, you know, they don't have lead pots, they don't have anything. I'm just trying to get it down in there. I'm just using some map gas here, or propane, no, map gas. Try to get as least amount of salt water in it as possible. I've done other ones that worked out a whole lot better. Alrighty, folks. I ran out of map gas, and then I had a spare, and it was empty too. But there you go. See right in there? It's pretty much sealed. That's all you're trying to do, is I'm filling it full of lead. It gives it a little weight in the front, um, and it seals it. It's the way I've always done it. These are pretty much disposable anchors, I guess you could say. So, I'll show you how I rig it up. But, before we do that, looky what we caught at the jetties yesterday. Is it that something? An 18 pound reef and rock anchor. I've lost two or three. And I caught one. So now, I have, actually I got another one here in the garage. I've got two spares. Wonderful, huh? 
that's what I use as my everyday anchor. <laughs> I'm really happy. We were really happy. And I'll show you. See? There you go. There's the reef and rock sitting up front. I use it constantly. Every day. So, that's an 18 pounder. And now I've got a 18 pounder back from the abyss because I've lost a couple and had to cut them. It's a, I don't know, $75 value. You know, when people call and they think a half day means half price, no, they don't. Because when I lose that anchor, chain, chain guard, uh, shackles, 20 foot of uh, stainless is what I have. And when I lose that, that's about $225 at last time I checked. So, uh, no, no, a half day doesn't mean half price. And there's a minimum, okay, what a day is. So, here we go. My regular, and now working the jetties. I'll show you how I rig it up. All right, well, what I did is I just put a little paint on it. Now you notice, the whole time I had a torch on here, none of the paint really ever went away, didn't bubble off. I was told by somebody else, and the guy who makes these anchors must probably do the same thing. He must use that heat resistant paint, like engine block paint, because somebody else told me that the heat resistant paint really lasts and I mean hell I had a torch on it and the paint never even came off but I shot it a little bit I just covered it up just to fill any cracks and crevices what we do here is I still got 20 foot of chain I just use smaller chain this is all stuff that I found I found this particular 20 foot piece sitting next to the boat ramp one day early in the morning nobody around just laying up on the side of the parking lot. So, losers, weepers, finders, keepers. Got a little shackle here. They come with these eyes. I put it in the eye. The same thing I always do is I use my stainless steel rigging wire. You buy this whole thing for about seven, eight bucks last year, years. It's a 304 stainless steel designed to resist rust and corrosion in harsh environments. Easy to shape and form, ideal for jewelry and hobbies. Comes with this handy dispenser and belt clip. Alright, so get this at Harbor Freight. I can't use, a lot of people will use zip ties. I can't use them, my boat's too big. So, I cut off a piece of this, and we make a trip system. You bring your chain on down, you put it real tight, and you run it through this eye on a, on a tight loop, and then you do a haywire twist. You pull each end, and you twist, and you twist. And you do that a bunch of times. I don't use the zip ties. A lot of guys use zip ties. Well, they can do that if you're in a smaller boat. I just have too much windage, too much weight on the boat. You know, 1,200 pound fishing team sometimes. So, this is what I do. I do it on this one that was up on the bow of the boat also. And I bring the chain down and I put it in this eye. So I do a whole bunch of haywire twists, and then I cut it off, alright, and then so that, that sharp end doesn't get me, I'll turn it around. So then, the chain and the anchor are like that. So when this gets really hung up, which believe it or not, even these do, because 90% of the time it's the chain, hopefully you can yank on this 
and it'll bust it and bring it out from the top. That's all good in theory, but let me tell you, it doesn't always work. So, that's the jetty anchor system. I have this separate, and then, of course, the one up on my little bowsprit, that's separate. So, this was just a freebie, and that's how I'm rigging up to be able to fish tighter to the rocks. Because this, you don't, this is, they call it a reef and rock. Well, you're not going to want to drop this down in our jetty rocks. I use this as my, that's my general purpose anchor. I've got an entire video all about the anchoring situations that I have to go through. Now, granted, oh yeah, everybody asks me, when you get in the trolling motor? Well, I'd have to have plates and mounting positions and all that welded to my boat. All right. And then I would have to carry and find space to put all these uh, batteries and or lith $1,500 lithium ions, which I'm probably never going to do. I always say, yeah, I'll get a trolling motor when I'm fishing Lake Pontchartrain, Louisiana. So thanks for watching, and I was certainly happy to get an anchor back. This wasn't mine, I'm sure it was somebody else's, but I pulled it up on my anchor. I've lost my share. I still have $225 sitting out there that a diver customer was supposed to go get for me. I really wish we did that because I was going to give my GoPro to take it down to the bottom. And I was going to film him going down. Well, such is life. Things just don't work out. So... There's just a little what we do around here. And the tip is filling this full of lead. All right, bonus feature. Bonus feature. Yes, this is the Jetty Wolf's anchor locker. And I have so much room. All right, so I got the hole here. I've shown this many times before. But there you go. There's the Jetty anchor sitting in a basket with over a hundred foot I think of line 20 foot of chain then over here there's my 20 foot of chain with the with the chain guard and a whole bunch of bigger rope bigger anchor line and then of course on the interior of this door I have a video where I showed this wonderful little object that I keep there's my stainless rigging wire, and I keep needle nose and something to tighten shackles with right there on the lid. So I'm sure you all miss these videos. So many videos of little rigging tips. Put your tools where you use them the most. And that's what I did when I saw these. They're a manual holder tube for like a tractor fender. See them? Got it mounted on there. It's got the little little instructions for the, you know, non-English speakers among us who might be out in the fields driving a tractor. So, there you go. Shut that. And then, of course, I just pull my anchor line and everything through there. And uh, there's the bat phone. It's ringing. I'll get back with you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Hey,